Hello, this is Dr. Peter Diamore again from the Orthopedic Center of South Florida, here today to talk to you about cervical myelopathy. Myelopathy refers to severe compression of the spinal cord in the neck or back that results in nerve dysfunction that can result in pain, loss of balance of coordination, and sometimes numbness and weakness. Myelopathy is different from radiculopathy in that myelopathy refers to compression of the spinal cord whereas radiculopathy refers to compression of the spinal roots branching off the spinal cord. It is possible that patients can have a mixed picture where there is compression of both the spinal cord and the spinal roots. We refer to this combined condition as myeloradiculopathy. There are many ways the spinal cord can be compressed leading to myelopathy. Most commonly, myelopathy is caused by wear and tear or degeneration of the cervical spine. These degenerative processes can cause narrowing of the spinal canal due to wearing out of discs and bone spurs or arthritis that can set in over time. This wear and tear of the cervical spine causing myelopathy is often called degenerative cervical myelopathy. Degenerative cervical myelopathy is the most common cause of spinal cord impairment across the world. It's most commonly seen in men and women, usually in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Patients that present with cervical myelopathy often have distinct and characteristic symptoms they report. Many patients report difficulty with balance. They often feel unstable, almost as if they are drunk when they are walking. Patients report stumbling or having to use assistive devices or grab onto objects within their home to walk to keep themselves balanced. Patients also sometimes report difficulty going up or down stairs. Myelopathy typically affects patients' hands quite severely. Patients often report clumsiness often dropping objects unexpectedly, like dropping a coffee cup. Patients also report difficulty with fine motor activities. These activities that require delicate and precise movements, such as buttoning your buttons, zippering a zipper, hitting the buttons on your cell phone, or sometimes your handwriting can be affected. Patients sometimes report that their handwriting gets messier or sloppier over time. In advanced stages, Patients may also report weakness and or bowel and bladder dysfunction. Patients report pain in their neck, back, or arms. Sometimes it's common that patients report tingling, numbness, or weakness that it could affect different muscles and areas of their arm. The numbness patients may experience sometimes is not any specific distribution, but affects large areas of the arms or the hands. We refer to this as global dysthesias. Diagnosis of myelopathy is diagnosed with careful physical examination and listening closely to your specific issues and complaints. On examination, we often find hyperreflexia or brisk reflexes. Sometimes abnormal reflexes are present that help indicate the possibility of the spinal cord being compressed. In order to diagnose myelopathy, a series of x-rays are taken from the front and the side of the head with the head tilted backwards or extended, or tilted forwards and flexed. These x-ray views help us determine any causes of compression that could be related to either arthritis, disc collapse, deformity, or possibly instability. Additionally, an MRI is obtained of the cervical spine to get a clear picture of the potential sites of compression of the spinal cord within the neck. The MRI allows us to both visualize the soft tissues and the bones simultaneously on the associated images. The MRI helps determine at which levels the spinal cord may be compressed in the neck. Additionally, CT scans are obtained to help gain better visualization of the bones in the neck, both to help with diagnosing myelopathy and to potentially help with preoperative planning. In some cases, nerve studies may be performed. Treatment of myelopathy is dependent on several factors. Non-operative treatment is usually reserved for patients that remain asymptomatic with evidence of spinal cord compression on MRI. These patients are typically followed very closely at set intervals to make sure they do not develop symptoms of myelopathy. Occasionally, patients with mild symptoms that do not interfere with their daily activities or their occupations may be managed conservatively with combinations of anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, activity modification, and occasionally injections. However, Myelopathy is one of the few conditions in spine surgery that is treated more aggressively with early recommendations for surgery. This is for several reasons. First, if left untreated, 
myelopathy can potentially lead to permanent nerve damage and residual deficits. Second, there is no non-operative care to cure myelopathy. What this means is myelopathy will not get better on its own or resolve itself on its own. Most patients experience what is described as a stepwise decline. What this means is patients will have periods of time where their symptoms stay stable. Over time, patients may experience worsening of their condition with periods of stability. This stepwise decline resembles a staircase, which is an easy analogy to describe the expected course of myelopathy. We know that prolonged periods of moderate to severe symptoms will yield typically poor outcomes. Also, we know that this will continue to progress without surgical intervention. We also know that surgery is best at stabilizing patient symptoms and preventing them from worsening. This means that surgery is good at preventing patients from getting worse, which we know will happen if surgery is prolonged for an extended period of time. Often, patients do see improvement in their symptoms, such as their hand dexterity or their balance, their associated weakness and pain. However, the ability to predict how much better these symptoms will get becomes difficult the longer we allow the symptoms to progress. Therefore, surgical discussions are generally had very early after a diagnosis of cervical myelopathy. Again, this is because we know surgery will help prevent symptoms from getting worse and will give the spinal cord the most favorable environment to heal, which means the best chance of symptoms improving. The specific surgery to decompress the spinal cord in the neck depends on several factors, such as the number of levels that are affected, the location of the compression within the neck, and the overall alignment of the neck. Surgical treatment for myelopathy can come from either the front of the neck or the back of the neck. These are typically in this form of cervical fusion. Sometimes the fusion is performed with the removal of disc material in the front of the neck to take the pressure off the spinal cord. This procedure is called an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, or commonly referred to as an ACDF. This can typically be done anywhere from one to maybe three or four levels to decompress the spinal cord, nerve roots, and promote fusion of those levels to ensure the spine is stable and to preserve the decompression for years to come. In less likely instances, sometimes an entire bone in the front of the neck called the vertebral body may be removed. This is referred to as a corpectomy, meaning to remove the entire bone, putting pressure on the spinal cord. The removed bone is replaced with a special cage that serves as a jack to make sure the overall alignment is maintained and the spinal cord remains decompressed. In some instances, when there is significant compression at multiple levels, it is more effective to come from the back of the neck and perform a decompressive procedure. Commonly, in older individuals, this is in the form of a laminectomy and fusion-based procedure. Laminectomy refers to removal of a strip of bone in the middle of the neck to take pressure off the spinal cord. You can picture cutting out a strip or a third of a PVC pipe. This allows the pressure to be removed from the contents inside the spinal cord, allowing it to expand. After this is performed, titanium screws and rods are placed with bone graft on both sides of the spine into the bones. We do this to prevent the spine from falling forward and to make sure that the decompression is maintained over time. This is commonly referred to as a cervical laminectomy and fusion. In select patients, a motion sparing procedure called a laminoplasty can be performed. This is done to increase the space for the spinal cord without having to fuse the spine. This is typically reserved for patients that are younger with good alignment and minimal arthritis in their cervical spine. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with cervical myelopathy, or if you're experiencing symptoms of myelopathy, such as clumsiness, trouble with fine motor activities like buttoning buttons, or having issues with your balance, please feel free to schedule a consultation with myself or one of our other spine surgeons at the Orthopedic Center of South Florida. I conveniently see patients at three locations, including Plantation, Pembroke Pines, and Miami Lakes. Feel free to schedule an appointment with us at www.ocsfdocs.com or call us at 954-473-6344.
Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day.